You're listening to Graphic Novel Explorers Club Podcast, an audio book club. Greetings, Explorers. I'm one of your hosts, Johnny, joined by... Dennis. And today we are discussing Pride of Baghdad by writer Brian K. Vaughn and artist Nico Henriken. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm probably not. We hope you've read today's title because all three of us have read the book, so beware, spoilers ahead. Explorers can share their opinions and thoughts with us by leaving a comment on our Facebook page or over on Twitter and Instagram at GN Explorers Club. Graphic Novel Explorers Club is available wherever fine podcasts are found, including YouTube. Today, we're looking at The Pride of Baghdad. It was published in 2006 by Vertigo. It's written by Brian K. Vaughn, who has written pretty much every great comic over the past like 20 years. He's been a part of it, like Why the Last Man, Saga. You read Saga, right? I've read parts of it. But yeah, I'm definitely a Brian uh, K. Vaughn fan. I I like Why the Last Man. Yeah, great series. Uh, And Paper Girls, which we started back in like episode 70-ish. Oh, no, we're in this... We're in the 70s and we're recording this, but, uh, <laughs> back in like the 50s, right. I think. And, and what uh, interested me about this was that it was based on true events that took place in 2003, but this was published in 2006. So this was a quick turnaround for current events, as well as being a self-contained one volume graphic novel, as opposed to a series or or you know a, a really long graphic novel. It, 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 was, uh, it was very short. And, yeah, but uh, you know, impactful. I'm sure DC will find a way to fold this into the main DC <laughs> universe, and uh, the Watchmen will appear. <laughs> <laughs> These I'm four sure. lines will be imbued with the superpowers, and one um, of them will be the Joker. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> He's one of one of yeah one of these is the one of the three jo- Jokers. Yeah, yeah. As uh, as Dennis was saying, this is a fictional account of a true story of four lions that escaped from the Baghdad Zoo after it was destroyed during the Battle of Baghdad in the 2003 invasion of Iraq. What happened to the animals in the care of the zoo is uh, uh, really happened. It's a sad and tragic story. And Mr. Vaughn here wrote an incredible fictional account of what may have happened. But I, I guess after the before the zoo was blown to smithereens, they had several hundred animals in the zoo. And then the the coalition that the US was leading decimated that down to 35 animals right, during I don't the think, invasion. I don't think the zoo was totally destroyed because I believe there were actually some lions, if I read correctly, that had stayed behind and hmm didn't actually, you know, wander around town, so to speak. But I mean, the, 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 the zoo was pretty wrecked. I mean, they, they, they mm-hmm. really did. They lost, they went from a population of 700 different animals down to 35 by mm-hmm. the time the city was finished being destroyed. Anyways, before we get into the story, we do want to say thank you to two people because this is the last episode of the season. We will be back in July ish with our summer special. We do, usually about four episodes. So we will be back in a couple months with our summer special. But before we get to that, I want to say thank you to Jake for co-hosting this season. COVID and the pandemic and shutdown kind of threw our uh, plans, and as everybody's plans, uh, into chaos. And he slid in and helped us out when we were uh, looking for another regular co-host. We also want to say thank you to Frankie, uh, sadly, adult life caught up to Frankie and she's not going to be able to participate in the podcast anymore. We, we got the sad news about that the other day. We were, we were trying to bring her back for this last episode of the season, but just one thing after another kind of, kind of prevented that throughout the whole season. But then in, in the final episode, it was kind of par for the course for the, the season. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, just want to say if you're listening, Frankie, which you're probably not, <laughs> um, <laughs> just thank you for l- launching this podcast with us and being a part of it. It's, it was a lot of fun. Absolutely. I mean, she, Frankie has been part of the podcast from the beginning. Uh, she was I- there for the initial discussions. She obviously appeared with us when we were on the local NPR show. It's been great to have Frankie as not only a voice, but also as a person who chose some interesting books for us. She managed to pull out some books from her collection that, you know, we would never have discovered. So she would be sorely missed. Yeah. But we're still friends with her. Well, we, for those who don't know, we, it was kind of funny. We, um, Frankie, Dennis's wife 
and I all worked at a blood bank here in Sacramento together years ago. And then I I ran into Frankie randomly year, like several years after that. This would have been like 2010, 11-ish. And then her and I like reconnected and became friends. And then Dennis and I had been friends, just coincidentally became friends outside of that. And then uh, back around, when did we start this? 2015? 16? Uh, something like uh, that, yeah. <laughs> Dennis had an idea to like do a reading club around comic books. And then I was like, no, we should do a podcast. And we got Frankie involved in the the rest was Graphic Novel Explorers Club history. So, but yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she will be missed. And um, whoever comes in has got some big shoes to fill behind her. So. Which, which brings us to the fact that we are pleased to announce our reality team. No, <laughs> <laughs> where we look for uh, look for the uh, third co-host. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. So, so uh, yeah, so this is a fictional account. Getting back to the to the comic book, this is a fictional account of a true story, and our main characters in this are four lions: Zill, an older male lion; Safa, a lioness who is Older than Zill, and she's uh, blind in one eye and, and missing an ear. Noor, who is a lioness, who's, as you'll see as the story progresses, she's the one who's like, really wants to explore freedom and be free from the zoo. And then her cub is Ali. And I looked up their names. Zill is Arabic for shade or shadow. Mm. Safa means pure. Nor means light or the divine light, and Ali means elevated or champion. And um, I was just curious, like I didn't, I didn't see that in um, initially, and then I reread this when we got closer to 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 this, and I was like, oh yeah, Safa, Safa is pure. Like, in, 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 skipping way ahead, spoiler, alert, like she kind of gives her life for the rest of the lions or she tries to, she's mm -hmm. willing to give her life for the rest of the lions when they run into a bear. Uh, right. And I was like, Oh yeah, she is pure. I guess she is the pure one. And, and that the, the pack is more important than herself. Mm -hmm. The rest of it. I was like, well, I guess maybe, but <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, they're just character names, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> he chose those names for a reason. <laughs> so, uh, Zill and Safa, the two older lions, were captured from the wild. They know – it's almost – this reminds me of almost like the parallel of the life of Pi. You know, some of the animals have experienced freedom and some others haven't. And anyways, it kind of made me think a bit, a little bit about life of Pi. And for oh, for the listener, sure. My, my dog's just – my dog just walked in the in the room. So, <laughs> no, I, I I mean, in some ways, uh, I, I mean, I, I'll say I enjoyed the book, but in some ways, the plot did remind me of a lot of things I've seen before. Whether it's like humans captured by I don't know, you know, apes or whatever, where there are certain individuals who grow accustomed to being imprisoned and the devil, you know, so to speak, and don't want to mess things up, while others yearn for freedom. And, you know, whatever is beyond the walls. And in some cases, it's a mythical, like, belief that there's something really awesome beyond the walls. Like, uh, what was that one uh, sci-fi film where they had the palm on their hand? And they, um, Logan's Run. Mm. Logan's Run. Where they believed that there's these tales of, of paradise beyond. And the, what or, motivates them to escape? Or like uh, One Flew Over the, the Cuckoo's Nest. Where, right. you know, is the safety of where they're at better than... Being having free will and choosing for yourself, absolutely. Um, or plague dogs. This also kind of reminded me of plague dogs, where you know the two dogs are it's somewhat like those two dogs are infected. They escape from mm -hmm. a lab, and then the the military is after them. The British military is after them because they they have these horrible viruses that could wipe out you know humanity, and then the dogs get to choose. You know they're 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 forced into it, but they choose to to die free as opposed to going back into being experimented on. So. Right. But yeah, which is the basic of the basic premise of the story is two of the lions know the hardships of of being wild and free about scarcity of food. Safa is sex, sexually assaulted, and that's how she gets blinded in her eye. And one of the lions who sexually assaults her. Yeah, attacks her 
And then Noor has been raised in captivity or she was captured as a kitten or a cub and uh, thinks she knows what freedom is. And, and they're like, you don't, Safa and, and Zill are much more content being in zoo. They don't look at it as captivity. They're like, no, we have caretakers. They take care of us. Nor's like, no, there are, there are jailers. They, they imprison us. Yeah. That's the, you know, I will say that's one of the problems I had with this story. I, I enjoyed it. Like I said, overall, but when we got Safa's backstory, I was like, Jesus, even when you have a lion, you're going to have sexual assault as her like backstory. It was kind of a, a trope that I was kind of tired of. I mean, I know it's yeah. the wild and they're just animals as opposed to people. But, you know, getting gang raped is, you know, kind of something that's been used in, in other stories where it's a human. And so I kind of like rolled my eyes when I saw that. Like I said, yeah. I, I, I like the story overall, and I understand that obviously this could happen in the wild, but it, it just seemed like a tired trope that we were revisiting even when we're just talking about animals. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it's almost like a, a crutch to show. Yeah, you know, there's like a million different ways they could have shown the horrors in outside, the story. Right. Outside yeah, in the uh, wild. Yeah. It, it, I mean, yeah, it could have it could have been anything. It could have been uh, poachers, you know, right. killing her. Her, her pack but no i agree yeah that 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 part i was like i was like well <laughs> it all it was so like super bad guy kind of right thing like he calls over his brothers to get in on the uh sexual assault and like all right that's yeah it really felt like game of thronesy to me and i was just like ah, this is really weak <laughs> yeah yeah that that is the only part of the story that I was like, all right, all right that's enough. That's mm-hmm. enough. The other part that I was like, okay, this is a little over the top, but mm-hmm. was the uh, the bear and lion fight. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> well, that bear was like, I, I was trying to think about that. So there's a bear that they find in some sort of palace. So obviously- it, it's, it's implied that's one of Saddam Hussein's son's palaces. Right. It was really opulent, whatever- and obviously, yeah, he kept a pet bear. Uh, the bear is implied to have eaten some of the food from another lion that was there. Therefore, the, the other lion that was there was weak. But I mean, that bear was huge. And I, I was trying to think, like, if 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 a group of lions were actually fighting a bear, would any kind of realistic, because this is sort of bound by realism. The, they're, they're not mythically enhanced creatures or or extremely large they're just normal lions and this is supposed to be a normal bear like that bear seemed really really big like have you have you ever read about bears that large i've seen bears at zoos but i can't think of a bear that would be that large it almost seemed like some sort of mythical creature rather than an actual black bear or whatever type of bear was supposed to be grizzly i don't know man kodiaks are supposed to get pretty big and then if it if it was you know in one of his son's palaces obviously they would have the resources to get whatever kind of exotic animal yeah. you know for their their place but yeah uh now going backwards in the story so the the this the Baghdad zoo is bombed the lions see an opportunity the story happens very very quickly it's a very fast read this is very odyssean in the story like they run into monkeys and the monkeys present a problem they mm-hmm. get past these monkeys and then they're they are presented with another problem of, of of these tanks that are rolling through the the outskirts of the town where the lions are kind of hiding and then yeah and then they go to a <laughs> a palace where there's a bear and then and then they run into these horses and uh, as they're moving through the city of baghdad and it doesn't i don't get the impression they're out for very long like Oh like no! Several hours, you know, it's, it's like a one day story. The the irony is that Noor had been planning a jailbreak with like the antelope and the monkeys, and she wanted to actually like kill the keepers, take their key, have the monkeys release them, and then they were supposed to be free in regular Baghdad. You know, with regular yeah. human, non wartime Baghdad, which is, <laughs> I mean, would have been a horrible situation for them. They would have gotten gunned down much sooner or, or captured or what have you. But it, it, it was fascinating to see her come up with this jailbreak plan. And then finally, when she's presented with the opportunity, she's slightly hesitant because she did, wasn't mentally prepared uh, for how it all went down. Yeah. And then ultimately, 
the antelope are like, no, we're not participating in this. Like, we don't trust you. You you hunt us. We're not going to free you and then have you roaming amongst us. And then the monkeys kind of back out of the deal, double cross them, and are going to kill the cub. They're going to kill Ali. And um, Zafa comes to the rescue. She's like, I'm not going to leave the zoo. I, I This is, I'm comfortable here. But she realizes the the monkeys are going to kill Ali and comes to the rescue. And that's sort of the point of no return. They have to leave now. Cause she's like the monkeys, I killed a monkey to get Ali back. So we're not, right, we're not safe here. What were they going to kill Ali? I thought they were going to use Ali as like muscle, like an enforcer. Oh yeah. Yeah. Or, or yeah. Yeah. As bait to mm-hmm. have the other lions be their enforcers. But. but, but you're right. After killing one, obviously they can't sleep at night because they'd be afraid their throats would be slit by the monkey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, and then the the scene after this with the the turtle and the tanks was uh, really heartbreaking. This is a really we're kind of oh, yeah. we've we've had so many fun stories and we're now ending the season on a bummer. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, the scene with the turtle and uh, the tanks was was really heartbreaking. Just 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 the storytelling and the interactions of everything in that. Was, well, um, yeah. What was interesting, yeah, because the the turtle obviously they live for very long. I mean, turtles can live what up to a hundred years. I think over uh, that even. Yeah. So the turtle had seen obviously this sort of conflict before between man, and through their own eyes, they had seen the damage that can happen when men fight. So yeah, it was it was extremely heartbreaking, and it felt more. Well, it felt more real because it was this wasn't some sort of uh, weird experiment. There wasn't some science project. These there weren't robot parts hooked up to these animals. These were just regular animals living am- among men. And so, yeah, yeah. This, to see the horrors that the men had committed and how it affected the animals was interesting. And like, the, yeah, the turtle had lost family to like oil spills, and it was yeah, it was it was an interesting story part of the story, but. Um, and then the other part I liked was the argument between uh, Zill and Safa about eating the remains of dead of dead citizens uh, who died in the bombing runs. Zill's argument is that lions, it's it's the pride's duty to eat. And then Safa's like, no, it's disrespectful to those who the the um, I think some of the zoo staff died in the bombing. And uh, and Zafa's like, no, it's disrespectful to eat those people that took care of us and and just the argument that ensues around that it's like a a moral argument <laughs> right i mean and they, they have that argument too later on when they they run across that lion who's emaciated you know safa was very much defending the zookeepers saying that you know even if this were other types of keepers it wasn't their zookeepers who had done this to them yeah uh, you know their keepers were good people uh and stuff you know and it, I don't know. I waver between her suffering from Stockholm syndrome, essentially, to her have, being smarter than some of the other animals and realizing, look, we were in a good situation. We weren't abused. These people care for us, you know, and especially- We coming were fed from, regularly. Yeah. The, coming from the trauma that she suffered, she felt this was as good as it gets. You know, this, was, this isn't a bad life compared to what the wild can bring. And so- it was a little – I was conflicted between saying she was Stockholm Syndrome and not realizing what true freedom was versus, you know, being safely kept within the zoo. So, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, like her her argument is we're, we're taken care of. We're not trapped. Right. You know, it's like we're, we're provided everything. It's, it's almost like the uh, Twilight Zone where there's the utopian existence, but you're not happy because there's no conflict. You know, or, or right. I don't know and, if that was out Twilight Zone, but, you know, like that old kind of sci-fi thing of. Right. And and really, you see the difference when you, you run across the bear and the emaciated lion because, you know, the bear s- states that we were pets. So there's a big difference. You know, the, they probably weren't looked upon lovingly. They were p- perhaps abused. They're chained. They're chained. Yeah, they were chained. They were probably abused. They, they were probably made to fight each other, you know, so the, a very different treatment than what the zoo animals received yeah and that's probably along the lines of how Noor saw things as opposed to safa seeing it as a paradise 
And then uh, there's a really good interaction between Ali and Zill. I got the impression that Ali is probably his his cub, his son, and just like the, the showing. <laughs> there was this, there was some sexist stuff in here, and I know that's it relates more to actually how lions and lionesses function as, as a as a pack in the wild. Like female lions, they do all the hunting. The males don't. They don't do shit. They just show up and chase everybody off after something's been brought down. And that there's a scene like that in this where <laughs> they, they want to go kill a horse or something like that. And Zill's like, no, 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 no. That's, that's the lady's work. We don't do that. And, right. Uh, <laughs> but although I will, I admire his, his tactical abilities where he was able to set up Ali to chase the horses off to basically have the bear run over and, yeah. you know, and then take care of the bear that way. We've talked about it a little bit, but here and there, but yeah, there's after they go into this palace, Safa and Noor, they go into this palace. They see an emaciated lion that hasn't been taken care of possibly because the staff were run off by the bombings. Well, it couldn't have been cause the, the, the lion's like in bad shape already. It's just, it was right. The, I forget, the bom- do they mercy kill him? The bombing just happened. So yeah. there's no way that that lion was suffering because there wasn't humans around for, you know, yeah, it had been going on for a while. Right. Exactly. And I don't believe they ever got around to it. I think they were talking about it and then the bear Mm -hmm. interrupted them and then then they fought the bear and then they moved on, which, you know, once again, kind of was the whole urgency of the whole story was, you know, they just kept being pushed more and more because of situations. Yeah. And then, and uh, throughout the story, Ali, keeps talking to Zill and the older lions about, or they, they relate to him what a sunset's like and how you can see it on the horizon. And uh, so there's this ongoing thing about Ali, the cub, not quite understanding what a horizon is or, and then after they fight this bear, then ultimately kill it by getting some horses to stampede on it. They, they come through to an area and Ali gets to see his first horizon or the sunset and and it looks it reminds the older the two older lions of like what what it's like out on the plains when the sun is setting or rising and then immediately after that <laughs> all right. four lions are killed by uh US army infantry so this is the part that confused me the most and i i had read you know just a little bit about the true life story what had happened and they they mention it at the very end of this comic as well. But what happened in real life was that, you know, these lions were very hungry and they hadn't been fed for a little bit because, you know, the invasion was happening. And then when they got out, you know, they were wandering around Baghdad. Then they ended up charging two soldiers for whatever reason. And then that the soldiers fired, in, you know, to defend themselves. However, the way they set this story up, they're just they they, they run up to this you know, Lion King type hill or a uh, mound of buildings and look at the sunset. And they're just standing there admiring the, the, the sunset and the horizon. And then they're shot. So I was confused. Like, shouldn't they have the lions maybe react to the soldiers and try to defend themselves by charging or something where they were running up to see the horizon and the soldiers happened to be up there and the, the soldiers misinterpreted it, but it, it didn't seem like the lions were actually a, active threat at that very moment i think it's more of a metaphor about how we treat animals you know the the soldier that shoots them tries to say like oh i thought they were charging or i didn't know you know Mm -hmm. there's some confusion around why this soldier shot these lions but i think it's more of a metaphor about how we you know we're Mm -hmm. unjust to animals in 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 many different ways Mm -hmm. you know and that then that's part of it was this soldier freaking out and, and then the, all of them shooting these lions. Um, I, yeah, I've read different stories about how they died and, and it seems to be more along the line of they, they got scared and shot up, not that they were charging, which, you know, I mean, if you're a soldier and you're in a war torn area and suddenly you see a couple of lions, I'd be (laughs) freaked out too. So (laughs) I'm not going to go, Oh, they'll, they'll be okay. Just don't bother them. I would be pretty freaked out. So yeah, I I've read that they, those, they could have been easily corralled and brought back to the zoo. 
I guess they did that with one of the other zoos that or the other lions that got stayed in the area but got out. Mm-hmm. They were able to to there was enough staff to to corral them. They could have done that too. But yeah, yeah, that's that's the story. It's a very quick read. It's I do recommend reading it. How, how about you, Dennis? Oh, highly recommended. It's sort of a, a realistic, gritty, homeward bound. I guess. I I, <laughs> yeah. I, I like this. I like the story. I, I like like you said. It was. It's a super quick read. I mean, it's only like 136 pages. I felt that was a good creative decision. I, I feel like if you're given too much room, and I don't know why. It, w- it was it was decided that was going to be so few pages. I can understand only being one volume, but being so few pages. But then again, I felt that was just right. Like there was enough urgency. There was enough, you know, story there that it, it really worked out. I think if you try to draw it out too long and too many conversations, I, I mean, you know, these 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 animals aren't. I mean, they're smart, but they're they're not very worldly. So they w- they would have just repeated the same damn stuff. You know, the outside yeah. world is evil. No, we got to look out for freedom. Blah blah blah. So it would just been kind of a rehash. So I felt that it would the editing skills to get this to be a very compact and and very engaging story was great. At first, I'll, I'll be honest, I hate talking animal stories like this. I generally <laughs> oppose things like Homeward Bound and and, and such. And I actually found myself very interested in, in, a, in a war story that wasn't a war story. It was like yeah. from the point of view of the animals and, and wandering through. And I found it, you know, really engaging. Yeah, it's a, it's an allegory for like an, the, the way we treat animals, the collateral damage from war. Because, I mean, ultimately, these animals are innocent, you mm-hmm. know, in the story. They, they behave as animals behave. They're, that's their nature. But... Yeah, it was just uh, yeah, it's a tragedy. It's a tragedy of you know, the story. So. And I'm sure that this was, a, this was a fictional part of it. But I also, once again, really did admire the zookeepers because even with the bombing, they basically tossed a whole donkey in with the lions, knowing that, hey, we don't know when we're going to be back. Yeah, that's uh, true. We don't want these animals to starve to death. Hopefully they're smart enough to maybe gnaw at this whole donkey long enough so that we can come back or what have you, but they could have e- easily just bailed and went, see you later animals. We don't yeah. give a shit about you, but that also added a level of like, they really cared about these animals. So yeah, whether it's fictional or not, I, I, I was actually pretty touched by that scene too. No, there's plenty of valid arguments for either Safa or Nor of mm-hmm. like, no, look, this is how good they are to us. And then also here's an example of how bad they are to us. Uh, there was plenty of argument you know, there's plenty of uh, ammunition for either argument to 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 be valid, for so. sure. And the art was amazing. This book would have even been shorter, but there was tons of two page panels, lots of lots of big art splashing across two pages. So, I mean, if they hadn't had those panels, this book would have been even shorter. Uh, and as much as illustrated, yeah, as as much as I would kind of like to recommend it for. For younger audience, uh, that one giraffe scene definitely not, yeah, <laughs> not friendly. Well, and the whole rape. the whole fight w- between the lion and 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 the the lions and the bear, like Safa, we didn't talk about this. Like Safa is horrifically injured, mm-hmm. and the condition of the lion that 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 was in this palace is right, pretty pretty terrible. And then the whole ending is right, very sad. Like I, I yeah, I wouldn't maybe a a, a young adult reading like you know a 12 13 year old 11 year old could probably handle this but not any younger than that and you know honestly going back to the ending i felt that was a really good creative choice it i don't know how to explain it but you know sometimes in like marvel films they'll be setting up a serious scene and then they cut to a joke that interrupts it. yeah it was sort of like that but in a in a much more serious grim way where there was like this hopeful moment right they see the sunset oh isn't this beautiful we finally made it and then it's abruptly cut by this horrific violence and it's not funny it's just it's it's just like reality like snapped into into their world and and interrupted i don't know what you call that kind of scene but i thought it was effectively used here well it's like all four of them got to especially uh nor really got to experience true freedom of mm-hmm. you know there's you your life can end with the type of freedom that you're seeking mm-hmm. and that's you know they they suffered that so and, and i mean it's also like shows the utter stupidity of humanity right but 
<laughs> on that on that downer um <laughs> We'll be back, like I said at the beginning, we'll be back probably sometime in July. That's usually when we come back with our summer special. And then uh, we do a Halloween special and a Christmas special. So you'll you'll see us sporadically throughout the rest of the year. But, um, but yeah, thanks for listening. We really appreciate it. Hopefully we'll have uh, more, more of a presence on YouTube for you YouTube listeners um, <laughs> next year too. So Smash that like button. yeah no no seriously thank you for listening we really appreciate your time and uh getting through this pandemic shit with us the past year and um we'll see you uh we'll see you in a couple months bye Uh... (laughs) (laughs) is that your lion roar (laughs) yeah (laughs) lion roar (laughs) <laughs> no, it's, I'm drinking a uh, sparkling water that always makes me so burpy. <laughs> <laughs>